What is going on, YouTube people? There are cards of comics here today for little Com C Mail Day. Uh, as you all know, I've been sending stuff into Com C most of the year now. Uh, things that I open from random boxes, like the Marvel stuff, you open up sports card boxes and get, you know, the random stuff that's five, ten bucks or whatever. Uh, Lorcana, I sent a bunch of Lorcana stuff in when they had different submission specials. And I've been slowly, slowly, slowly building up a little bit of a war chest over there. And uh, rather than cash it out, my plan always was to send in the cards that I have laying around my desk that I don't feel like dealing with that fall into that one to 10 to $15 range because I don't like plain white envelope through eBay. I get it. A lot of people have a lot of success with it. I don't have the time nor the patience to deal with it. So I send that stuff off to Comp C. When it sells, if it sells, it sells. It's not that big of a deal. It's not like I have a ton of money invested into that stuff. It's just leftovers from boxes that I opened. I have now taken that stuff and made a couple purchases. Picked up some PC items, which like I said, was the plan from the beginning. Get rid of unwanted piles of cards on my desk that are taking up space and turn that into a handful of cards that I would actually like to own. Uh, I decided to ship some of those home. I had a little stockpile of about, uh, what is it, like five cards, I think. So I figured, ah, for the end of the year, let's go ahead and ship those bad boys home. Uh, and then, you know, we'll build up a pile again and then have some shipped home. I actually bought some raw stuff to send in for grading uh, on the platform. I will note here, this video is sponsored by my good friends over at ComC. Uh, they obviously sp sponsor the weekly sports card market update, and they are also sponsoring this video today as well for me. So let's go ahead and work through these, talk through it. Like I said, all this stuff is basically PC stuff. There's not like an air quote investable card in here. I bought these cards because I thought they were cool. Uh, first up, an actual raw card, and then the rest are slabs. This is one that's eluded me for a while. Uh, I've never owned one of these before. One and one for a long time. Uh, just never came across one and then just figured, ah, eh, submitted an offer on one on ComC and snagged one. It is from the first edition, the Peach Momoko edition of Marvel anime, a little dust there. It is the Mosaic, the, I believe this is the Mosaic, yes. Mosaic Ghost Spider from 2020 Marvel anime. Picked one of these up raw. I debated submitting it for grading, and then I was like, I don't really need this card in a slab. It's perfectly fine raw, or I'll, I'll end up sticking it in a, a one-touch, probably. I think this was like 25 or 30 bucks or something, which is about what they go for. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Peach Momoko art, so happy to pick that one up. We'll save that one for a second. Another spider wine card. This is from... This is the first time I've ever actually had a Marvel Gems card in hand. Very underrated set from 2016. I shouldn't say underrated because they do get quite expensive, but you just don't see them a ton. Actually bought this raw and submitted it for grading because I did want this one slabbed up. Uh, I knew that it probably wouldn't grade while well. I looked the card over. It has, you know, whiting on the top and bottom. It is a thicker, thicker card, uh, like a 70 point card. So I, I knew that it probably wasn't going to get the best grade in the world, but I was okay with that. I just wanted it in the CGC holder. Uh, these cards look really good in hand. The silver has got a little holographic on it. Style. This is numbered out of 225. This is the base version of the card. Uh, there's a bunch of different parallels of these. I wouldn't mind picking some of the other ones up now that I've kind of seen this one in hand and how nice this looks. So I went ahead and picked one of these. I think this was like 80 bucks maybe plus the 20 bucks to grade it or whatever it is. Uh, these don't come around very, very often at you know semi-reasonable prices. So I went ahead and snagged one of those. Uh, a non-Marvel card. This is a fun one. Uh, I saw this one. I've been watching it for a while. And I think on the Black Friday sale, the person ran a discount on it. And I went ahead and snagged it. It is a Jim Ross on-card auto. It's an in-person auto authenticated by PSA. He has plenty of pack-pulled stuff. I think I got this for like 20 bucks, 25 bucks, maybe. It was not expensive. Um, but I, I honestly, a lot of them were sticker autos and I honestly didn't like a lot of the images on them or they weren't WWE cards. And I wanted something that had, uh, the WWF or WWE logo on it. He has other stuff out there, but for 20 or 30 bucks, I just went ahead and snagged this one. 
pretty clean auto on it. Nothing super crazy. Uh, listen, I grew up in the 80s with Macho Man and Hulk Hogan, and then a better part of my late college years in the late 90s and early 2000s, I got back into wrestling right as the Attitude Era was starting, which a lot of people did. I mean, that's pretty common. You know, Stone Cold was on his way up, Degeneration X, uh, HBK, Triple H, The Rock, all those guys. I was pretty hardcore from probably like 96, 97 into the early 2000s. Uh, you know, one buddy would always get the pay-per-views. We'd go over there, watch them. We'd go to Ticket, or we'd go to Monday Night Raws and pay-per-views events if they came to Cleveland or Columbus or Pittsburgh. I think the most famous match I saw in person was, it was in Cleveland. It was, or there's two of them actually, the Hardy Boys ladder match where um, I forget what pay-per-view it was, but it was in Cleveland. It was like the legendary Hardy Boys ladder match. It was like put ladder matches on the map. And then I was at the event in Pittsburgh. I don't remember if it was a pay-per-view or a Monday night. I think it was a pay-per-view where um, the Undertaker, uh, Mankind, Hell in a Cell match that was just absolutely crazy. And if you grew up in that era, I mean, Jim Ross, absolute legend just his his play-by-play -play, whatever you want to call it announcing uh is just absolutely fantastic back there during that era last two here uh, i'll save the best one for last this is another fun one uh these are fantastic cards i've actually purchased a few more of these raw and sent them into grading at psa uh, but i had to have this one the old school cgc blue label this is from 2020 marvel ages um, I wanted one of these when the McFarlane signing was going on, and I couldn't find one. They were all, like, super jacked up in price because everyone was looking for them. This would be a great card to have McFarlane sign if he does that again. These cards are really nice in hand. This is, like I said, Marvel Ages 2020, uh, the Decades series. Uh, this is the Venom card. Absolutely a little gorgeous mosaic going on there. Looks great in hand. Love, like, the Decades 1980s logo across the top. And this is a CGC 9.5, so this is a gem mint. So this would convert to a 10 uh, if I sent it in for reholdering, but I will not do that. I would rather have it in the CGC blue label. Uh, and you can see you got the issue there on the back. I actually have that issue, um, ASM 316, in a CGC 9.8. So this will pair up nicely with that for a display at some point in time. Um, but just great looking card. I, like I said, I actually went on ComC and found a few others of these raw and snag them and send them in the PSA. I believe this is a PSA 10 pop one. Uh, they don't come up very often in there. There's a Spider-Man one that's pretty good looking as well. And then the Wolverine one is okay-ish. Uh, I looked at some of the others from the set, but the Venom by far is the best looking one. And like I said, it just really pops in hand. Glad to pick this one up. This was uh, 50 bucks maybe, 40, 50 bucks, I think, 50, 55, somewhere in there. It wasn't super expensive. Uh, but to, to get it already graded in a gem at 9.5, especially in an old school CGC label, uh, absolutely love that. Last but not least, one I've been looking for for a while. I have the, I guess, sister version of this card, the partner that goes with it. Uh, these normally go for, I want to say like 500 bucks. This was the most expensive card that I got out of the lot. Someone had it. This was definitely a Black Friday pickup. They had it discounted like 30% off or whatever it was. And I think I picked this up for like 300 or 350. It was a pretty good deal. Uh, it is from the End of the Spider-Verse set. And it is the Haley Steinfeld Auto. But this one has the inscription on it with the Spider-Gwen inscription for the character. I have, which I picked up on Com C as well, the regular version of this card. So I picked this one up first. This one goes for a lot less. I mean, still expensive, a couple hundred bucks. Uh, but now I have picked up this one and already graded in a CGC nine. These are a little bit tougher grades, a lot of chipping uh, on the edges of these. So this one, as much as I would like to have the labels match, uh, I just refuse to crack a Marvel card out of the blue label unless I absolutely have to. So this is a cool one, pretty good auto. It's mostly on sticker. It went off a little teeny tiny bit there, but given the discount that I got on this compared to what they typically sell for, these also don't come up a ton. Uh, and then with the spider Gwen inscription on the bottom, uh, super, super happy to pair these two together and knock these out. These are two I've been hunting for 
for a really long time. I think I picked this one up over the summer uh, and then just got this one on a Black Friday deal to complete the pair uh, for the Steinfeld autos. So uh, Marvel wise, you know, one, she's the voice actress for spider One. Obviously, she's got the whole Kate Bishop thing going on. There's a lot of Haley Steinfeld buzz in general. So I'm happy to lock these one away. I would like to pick up uh, the last thing that I'm really looking for with her auto on it is a, and I normally don't like comic books graded very often, but, or I'm sorry, autographed very often, but I wouldn't mind picking up a CGC 9.8 of something with her auto on it. I have a safe search for it. There's a couple certain books that I like uh, that I have my eye on, but they usually are like very firm on price. And I think they're a little overpriced. So I've just been trying to remain patient because there's really no hurry for me to grab anything. So that's all I got for you boys and girls. Hope you like the pickups. Curious which one's your favorite. Drop it in the comments down below. We'll catch you boys and girls on the next one. Peace.